everyone, so this video is going to be the first in the series of kind of advice videos and I'm not sure how often I'm going to do these yet, maybe every two weeks, maybe once a month, I'm not sure, but these are all questions that you have sent me on Twitter and Facebook and on video comments and that kind of thing and I'm going to pick five questions for every video and answer them, they're kind of on a fairly large range of topics so I thought that would be quite interesting. But the first question is how can you tell if a guy likes you? Now this is obviously a very very common question, something that we all want to know and I think that it's a very confusing subject as well because what happens sometimes is you can years later find out that someone really liked you, that you had absolutely no idea, you didn't know that there was any kind of inkling of a feeling being there but they were actually crazy about you. So it's very very hard to tell and you can't always tell, I know that's kind of awful advice in a way but you can't always tell but um, one of the main ways you can tell if someone likes you I personally think genuinely is if they are not really playing games so if they always reply to your texts if they always want to see you I'm not saying that they should you know reply straight away or be hovering around you all the time because no one likes that either but if they're just showing interest um, and if they're taking an interest in you personally, not kind of just to get something out of it for them, if you know what I mean, and showing you that they want to spend time with you and that they want to get to know you better. And there are sort of small telltale signs like sometimes how they look at you or if they touch you in a certain way. I feel like women tend to be more affectionate than men do. And if a man does something like kind of accidentally brushes their hand on yours or something like that, it kind of means more when a man does it than when a woman does it because I feel like women tend to kind of be more affectionate with people in general. So there are just a few little tips. Obviously you can't always know. Um, and it's one of those things that I think you just have to go with your gut feeling and um, if someone likes you then that's great if he doesn't like you and you've kind of approached it then at least you know um, the next question is style advice for men now this is a really really good question because I am really passionate about style for men I know that this sounds kind of strange but I love nothing more than seeing a man dressed well and um, obviously it's down to personal preference and I am very very picky when it comes to what I like men to be wearing so um, if you are a man and you're watching this then you know by all means feel free to ignore my advice because it's just what I personally like just like you know some men prefer blondes some men prefer brunettes I have a very specific um, dress sense when it comes to men and um, if a, a man's doing something as small as wearing the wrong shoes it can absolutely ruin it for me. I know that's very very shallow but um, I mean like on a superficial level obviously if you love someone you don't feel like that but um, yeah so I think the first thing is you want to get down to basics. I like men in really basic clothes. I don't like kind of fiddly shirts and um, you know that kind of whole not rock guy but kind of like I want to say like how Justin Bieber dresses but I don't mean it like in that kind of offensive way it's just I like men to be dressed very simply and there's certain sort of classic items that I think look really really nice on most men that being a pair of nice fitting jeans so many men wear the wrong fitting jeans and a pair of kind of not too skinny not too baggy straight lined jeans that are not too long and you have to do that kind of big fold or whatever um, look really great as does a stripy jumper or t-shirt. Um, I like kind of sloped v-necks or a round neck. I really don't like collars. Um, I, I feel like I'm really picky for saying all these things but I'm just sort of saying what my personal taste in that kind of look is. I don't like shirts, I don't like anything with a collar like the polo shirts and that kind of thing, I really don't like. Um, shoes, I'm very very picky as well, I prefer dark kind of slightly heavier looking trainers or converse, I think men look awesome in converse. And um, hats, I love men in beanie hats, personally I think it stems from a little bit of an obsession with Enrique Iglesias during his um, you can't escape my love phase and he used to wear those. 
love, love, love that. So I think that that um, kind of sums up my ideal thing. And then if you're trying to be smarter, a nice, simple white shirt, I think, always looks great. And I think as well, in terms of colour, a lot of men are drawn to colour. And especially in this country, where people tend to be quite fair-skinned, I feel like a lot of men make not the wrong choices because obviously it's in the eye of the beholder but wearing sort of colours like pale yellow and pastels um, can just tend to sort of wash you out a little bit and my boyfriend isn't fair skinned at all my boyfriend's darker skinned than me because he um, well I won't say where he's originally from because he might not want me to say it but he's um, part English part something else just like I am and um, not the same country as me but um, so he's darker skinned than me so he can wear things that on some people would really wash you out and I think that colour is something that you really need to be aware of but things like baby blue and navy I feel like are flattering on most skin types and look lovely on all men I think baby blue looks nice on all men so yeah though the, well, what is the matter with me those are my tips for style for men i'd love to know what your kind of pet peeves that men wear is that men wear is um my pet peeve and my boyfriend does this all the time and it drives me insane is wearing a long sleeve top with a short sleeve top over the top because it just reminds me of the big bang theory and he does it all the time and it's kind of become a running joke i think he just does it now because he knows i don't like it and every time he comes out we sort of make a joke about him you know being a cast member of the big bang theory but um that's one of my pet peeves so let me know definitely what you think pet um your pet peeves are with dressing for men another thing i really love is men that wear timberland boots timberland boots look great in my opinion um what else have we got uh okay starting out on youtube and vlogging i've had a couple of questions about this and i decided to kind of combine the two so tips for starting out on youtube i've done a video about um the whole subject so you can go and have a look at that if you want a bit more information but my top tip would be to just get out there and do it make as many videos as you can on as kind of varied topics as you can because then there's more chance of people finding them make sure you've got facebook and twitter and you kind of tweet people and um, make sure you just kind of get your channel around watch other people's videos comment on them leave comments sort of I feel like you should kind of get to know the person a little bit first before you leave the sort of hi can you please check out my channel comments because I just feel like then you don't know if that person genuinely likes your videos or if they just want you to subscribe to them so if you kind of watch someone's videos that you like and kind of just leave them some nice genuine comments and then sort of ask them for help I know I get loads of comments from people all the time and I always go and check out their channels and subscribe and that kind of thing but um just to really push yourself and get yourself out there and it will happen in the end it takes time i've been on youtube for two years now and um it definitely takes time it takes a lot of hard work but you will kind of get to a place that you're happy with eventually i think and um when it comes to vlogging a lot of people have asked why i don't vlog and all that kind of thing and um wanted me to do kind of things like you know house tour and a boyfriend tag and all that kind of thing and while I can appreciate that other people <coughs> um, want to do it and that people like watching those types of videos, I just feel like my personal life is my personal life and I don't want my relationship ending up on guru gossip and that, I know you're probably saying that shouldn't let you, shouldn't stop you but the thing is I don't want to put my personal life out there for everyone to see I just don't feel the need for it I make videos because I like making them and because I like talking about beauty but you know I don't need to broadcast my personal life out on the internet because all people are going to do is pick at it and I don't want that and um so yeah that's why I don't do kind of vlogs and that kind of thing um then what else have we got okay two more questions the worst chat up line you've ever had so this isn't just a line it's kind of like a little experience but the first what well, not the first the worst um was <laughs> this sounds really hilarious but it was actually in a fruit and veg shop 
and it was like a big fruit and veg shop in an industrial area and I went in one day with my mum and my godmother and we were just kind of walking around you know doing the fruit and veg shop and this guy came up to me and he was this kind of strange looking guy long ponytail um a good few years older than me as well at the time and he came up to me and he was just kind of like following me around the store and then I realized that he worked there so I thought oh he's just kind of doing his job but then he came past me and said that he thought I was really beautiful and that he would like to get to know me better were his words I sort of said that I'm sorry but you know I'm I'm not interested and then carried on with my shop took the vegetable box out to the car and my mum and my godmother were kind of following behind me because they were still paying so I took the stuff out to the car closed the car door and then he was stood there and he stood there and just sort of looked at me and I just sort of said can I help you and he just gave me a piece of paper with his phone number on it and said if you change your mind and I was like I'm not going to but okay whatever off he went I'd forgotten about it and then a few weeks later I went back in and um, I had I had my handbag sort of hanging over my shoulder and he walks past and he put something in my handbag and I at that point was just ignoring him because I just thought why make this more awkward you've already asked and I've already said no so I'm not going to make it even more awkward and he walked past and he put something in my handbag and then when I got in the car I opened it and it was a note saying here's my phone number again because I'm assuming you lost it so he was assuming that I'd lost his phone number because I hadn't called. Like it never crossed his mind that I hadn't called because I wasn't interested as I'd told him initially. So I stopped going to that shop in the end because it had just kind of gotten a bit weird. That's kind of my worst chat of line. I've had some absolutely ridiculous ones that are just completely, completely ridiculous. I was at a bar once and I had the bartender told me that I had an amazing chest. <laughs> so yes there's been some absolutely ridiculous ones but that was the one I can think of I know you're probably thinking like that sounds really creepy but it wasn't creepy it was just just kind of ridiculous on his part really and then the last question is have I got any tips on how to be a good friend now this is kind of hard to answer because I don't know if you would necessarily say about yourself that you're a good friend but um, I think I'm an okay friend I know some people that are really really good friends and I wouldn't consider myself that way but I think the main part is to make sure that you're always there for your friends when they need you because that's kind of what makes a good friend and um, making sure that you're interested in their lives I think that's a really important thing because I obviously live far away from most of um, my kind of childhood friends but I do make an effort to kind of Facebook them and Skype them and that kind of thing and make sure that they're okay and what's going on in their lives and that kind of thing I don't want to ever not know just because I stopped <coughs> Making an effort because that's the thing with friendships just like with a relationship You've got to make an effort to keep your friendships good and to keep them going and um, It's very very important to kind of give that attention to your friendship because otherwise it just kind of dies down and then what ends up happening is you don't make the effort they don't make the effort and it just fizzles out and that's a real shame so those are my five questions um, if you have got any other questions then don't be shy to pop those in the comments below and they might be featured in the next advice video and um, don't forget to thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you next time bye